Sin is surprising. A quick four-hour match. You either die or just win in a landslide. Really, a whole match is four hours? Could get that done in like a morning stream if we uh, take lunch back a little bit. Anyway, no, no plans right now, but um, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. How'd Horde Knight go? We won. Yeah. Uh, if we could flag the editors, please, and I'm gonna walk, watch a quick trailer. Wow. Absolutely. Like, I could, I, I, I have not been sold harder in a game based on like the world and what it is. Of course, we haven't seen any, like I, I hope to God that's not a janky mess. Um, but man, oh dude, I'm going to wishlist that immediately. What was Neo Berlin? Neo Berlin 2087. Uh, let's see. Was it 2087? Oh, there it is. Freaking awesome, dude. Wow. The story begins on a dark, ominous night with Neo Berlin plunged into chaos following the savage murder of the head of the police department. The enigmatic Nolan, a brilliant detective with a troubled past, is tasked with the dawning mission of finding and safeguarding the police chief's daughter, a potential key to unlock the mysteries behind her father's death. With the state of the technology, weapons, and unique abilities, Nolan embarks on a perilous journey to locate Natalie as quickly as possible. Jeez. Technical advancements of cyberization, the ritual of the city, their power absolute and unchallenged. Your mission will lead you also through the wasteland. They've got fallout in here, man. Like what? This is crazy. Of course, there's gonna have a wasteland in there too. An emotional main story consisting of heart-wrenching moral dilemmas and immersive gameplay investigations, unique gameplay built on a blend of first and third person. Customize your character's abilities and weapons for whatever play style you prefer and choose from a vast array of shooter stealth role-playing game mechanics. Inspired by classic cyberpunk movie and themes. Explore a setting you've never seen before, Berlin in the year 2087, a cyberpunk metropolis shielded by a massive new Berlin walls from its devastated surroundings, where outcasts gather and malfunctioning machines roam the land. Man, I see stuff like this, where outcasts gather and malf... Can I, like, just go out and explore this? Like, is this a linear game, or is this, like, a cyberpunk-style, like, action sandbox? Does it say anywhere? Is this like have they said open world or anything? Like what are our tags? What are our tags? Okay. Interesting. Anyway, thank you. I think remotely sensed link that. That is uh so far this is the best thing out of Gamescom for me. Granted, it's like the third thing I've seen out of Gamescom, but this is this is by far the most interesting thing out of Gamescom for me right now. Cool. Oh wait, what was the next line? Chat was saying read the next line. I'm sorry. Which next line? Which next line was it? So we're on a little bit of a delay. This one? Unique gameplay built on a blend of first That? That didn't answer my question. Second to last of the block. Explore the wasteland full. Oh, yeah. There we go. Well, yeah, that, that kind of says it, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean it's open world. That could just mean you're literally exploring through the environments. That... We, we would need a bit more uh, uh, black and white terminology for what I'm asking for. Yeah, I saw that line. That's not what I'm asking for. Yeah. Sorry, just making sure. <laughs> uh, why be playing more Knock in the Coffin Lid? Yes, this afternoon. Yep. Yeah, over over the last year, with as, with as many different projects as I've gotten, um, as I've had demoed to me for investment stuff, one of the big things I've learned is you really have to look for black and white terminology the amount of corpo speak, as someone in chat just said, in games these days has never been higher. So what, what game companies will do purposefully is obfuscate the description of their games, especially before they're released or in EA, to give themselves more freedom in production later. It's a tactic. It's a technique where they will, they will not use black and white terminology specifically because they don't want to make promises. Which honestly is not the worst thing. You don't want to set expectations that you don't necessarily know you're going to meet. But knowing that, you need to be aware when you're reading EA stuff, like you need to look for that stuff. 
you it, whenever you see an EA product making broad claims and strokes, like you have to keep that in mind. So because a lot of times that stuff will happen and you just for some reason during development it may not be possible or they decide not to do it and it's kind of like you know that's that's why you look for the black and white language a like i was looking for terminology like a seamless open world that allows you to explore outside of the main story like that would be the line i would have been looking for in that description but it didn't look like there's anything like that so as far as we know it could be like a corridor shooter we're not entirely sure it didn't look like that it could also be like deus ex style where it's not open world but it's more like linear semi-open world so it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they do lots of different ways they can approach it maybe they don't even know yet but it'll be interesting we'll definitely follow along with it by the way what we're doing now is we're clearing this location out of loot and then we're going to reset the quest and uh, come back and loot it all again I definitely hear someone else. Ah. Oh. We're not gonna worry about that. Is this a train car? Oh, how cool. They like, turned a train car into their house. Dude, I love our spear so much. Gotta put the bone in the fridge. Bone in the fridge. Oh. Okay. Oh, wait. We just unlocked the main door. Oh, cool. Perfect. One hour and 15 minutes until Black Myth Wukong reviews. Nice. That's a game we'll definitely be trying. Oh, also, somebody asked me about this a while back, and I didn't know at the time. But now I do know and confirmed I can announce it. Uh, we will be trying Star Wars Outlaw the game they, they pinged me in and asked me if i wanted to do a sponsored stream and i said okay like, i'll check it out so uh I, somebody was asking if we're gonna try it we're absolutely gonna try it yep and we'll see how it is together mm -hmm. i hope it's good i really hope it's good to put it bluntly some of the some of the gameplay we've seen has me a little worried so i, I do really hope it's good Yeah, some of, the, some of the gameplay we've seen for the Star Wars game looks a little uh, unpolished, we'll say. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see... I'm curious to see if that was just like a pre-production thing, maybe. Yeah, we'll all find out together. <clears throat> Would you have tried it outside of a sponsor stream? Yes. I, I already said that I was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, we, we pretty much try all new Star Wars games, even if it's just for a little bit. Just to see how it is. One day, one day we'll get another Jedi Knight chat, hopefully. One day. One day. What game am I talking about? The new Star Wars game, Star Wars Outlaws. Also, to be fair, uh, talking about good Star Wars games, I actually love Star Wars Jedi franchise. I, I like that whole franchise. I had a great time in the last one, and um, I'm one of the people that's always been on board with that franchise. I like Star Wars Jedi. That's a cool one. I want another KOTOR. Yeah, the, the main KOTOR remake is still in development. They actually confirmed recently that it is still in development. So, hopefully we get something good from that. That knife is better than your bone knife? Oh no, it was? Shoot. I thought the bone knife was the best thing for harvesting. Hmm. Guess not. Last time I played this was four years ago on the PS4. It looks amazing in the console one. Is the console one just bad or did it get good looking in that time? It got good looking in that time. I played this game a long, long time ago and it didn't look nearly this good when I played it. Looked much more Minecrafty, much more voxely. So no, they have they have made some big progress in this game. Yeah. Tolkien Geek says, "Do you plan on playing Dawn of Defiance?" Uh, 
a new dog. Nah. Yeah. Looks like eight to Conan. I don't know if it's doing enough differently to really sell me on that, that again, to be honest. Looks cool, but I mean, you know, I, I had a lot of hours in AOC and it looks very similar. And also it kind of strikes me as if you are not into the whole Greek aesthetic. Then maybe that game is not for you. <laughs> so, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. We will keep an eye on it. Can I go through here? There we go. Oh, shoot. Nice buzz. You're feeling rowdy? Yeah, I am. Hey, Chad, I'm feeling pretty rowdy today. Just uh, just a, an early heads up. We might have to get a little rowdy. Oh, my God. I'm so drunk right now. You are drunk as shit. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get some XP, I guess. Loot bonus. Yoink. And I'm so drunk and I'm popping pills. Like, damn. We're, a, we're an animal, chat. Jeez. Better drink some toilet water. Mmm, toilet water. Oh my god, this is... I am, I am real freaking drunk. <laughs> like, jeez, what is happening? Oh my god. I did not realize you could get this drunk. <laughs> okay, wait, I think we're okay. We're okay. That was awesome. Alright, we're gonna go through here. Grab some yucca seeds. Oh. Weird. Oh, oh god. Oh god. You dead? Did we get the experience? No. There we go. Okay, good. What's our meta to? 40. Nice. Okay, that's not bad. This level's super cool how it like. You have to basically S around the outside through the trains to get to the key unlock. I like how they did this level. Great. We want to search every container we can because we have the loot bonus on, which I'm assuming works with that. Increases loot quality. That bone was super quality, chat. High quality bone. Funny enough, my nickname in college. Uh, let's do everything in here, and I think we're good. Oh, Tato's! I do love a good Tato, chat. I do love a good Tato. It's a metal door. Bro. Right in the Ghibli bits. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. You know it. Delicious. Oh, it's just in the kitchen. The heck? Where is this guy? Oh. 
<laughs> you jerk. Yeah. Hey, ding level 40. Hell yeah, man. All right, let's see. We got to find these supplies still. Of course, we missed the one container we needed, right? Yes, ma'am. I did not. Thank you. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, look at that. Weird. Okay. A little strange, but we'll take it. Uh, I can drop you. Beautiful. All right, let's go turn this in, do a drop off, and keep moving. Another quest done for Miss Claire. Oh, there's a supply drop. I totally missed that. Let's go get that supply drop. Right over there. Heck yeah. Woo! All right, and we're going back to the, uh, oh. Wow, it's in the middle of this town. We've never been over here. Let's see what this is. Is calling your wife ma'am normal in the south? I mean, calling people sir and ma'am is a sign of respect that people do in the south all the time, yeah? Mm hmm So if my wife is like, hey, can you help me with the groceries? I might jokingly be like, yes, ma'am, and like walk out the door with her. Let's go from the south? I am. Yep. Born in California, raised in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Do-do-do-do. How do you have it set up so the sound of your game doesn't catch on the mic so you can play without headphones? Uh, I use lots of different tricks for that. So I used to DJ and produce music. And uh, when I did that, I, I had to learn a lot about like noise cancellation because I didn't have a, a studio. So I had to uh, learn a lot about noise cancellation and, and, and sound design and how that stuff works. So I use like a bunch of different tricks to, to make it so I don't have to use headphones. Um, I use a combination of two different gates. Um, am I on fire? What's going on here? Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's the, the, the TLDR, 12 lockpicks? Wow. Um, the TLDR, TLDRs, it's lots of different things, but it's a combination for my current setup. It's a combination about, um, really good soundproofing. Um, in my current studio, I actually have what's called floating drywall. So none of the drywall in my studio is connected to studs. There's a rail system behind the wall and on the rail system, every few feet is a rubber gasket. And then they use nails specifically on those rubber gaskets. So all of the drywall in my studio doesn't actually connect by any hard means to anything outside of it. And what that means is when vibration and sound comes in or out, it doesn't, the drywall basically stops it. Um, and then on top of that, I have like, you know, super soundproof insulation. I have special uh, soundproof ceiling tiles in here that absorb the sound. And um, I also, when I built the studio, uh, and there's a whole basement tour on YouTube if you want to see this. But when I built this studio, I actually have a soundproofed server closet behind me. And there's a soundproof portal that goes through the wall. So what I did was my four monitors, my keyboards, all of my stuff goes into this giant cable trunk that then goes through the wall, through a soundproof portal into the server closet. So the server closet is completely soundproof. So all, none of my computers are in the room that I stream in. That's why you don't hear my computers. And, um, and that's how that works. So there's a lot of other tricks, for instance, where like a little known fact, if your speakers are on your desk and your microphone is also on your desk, then your speakers are passing that reverberation through your desk into your microphone. So one of the first things I did to help with, with that sound 
is I would use a, a mic stand. Like I would be performing stand-up comedy. I put a mic stand on the floor next to me and then I held my mic on that. And just doing that cut down the amount of sound my mic got exponentially from my speakers. Um, it's common knowledge, but not a lot of people know that. So it's that kind of thing. And, and, and lots of little tricks add up to the point where now I don't need headphones and I have speakers and it all works great. So it, that's, that's kind of how that whole thing works. One day, one day maybe I'll make a video going over all the things I do because there's like 20 different little things, but um, that's the gist of it. Yeah. That do be the gist. Um, okay. So I, I kind of want that med kit and I kind of need those books. Mm-hmm. So what you're basically saying is magic? Yes. What I'm basically saying is it's magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We can drop... Eh, you know what? We need. I've been dropping cloth the whole game, and I think I'm actually starting to get to the point where I need some, so I need to stop dropping cloth. And then maybe I could stop dropping roll. But then I'd have to be on fire. And that feels like it would be uncomfortable. We'll eat some mouth. Let, let's just eat some cat food. We'll open this up later. Okay. This game is really, really fun to stream. Because it's like you, you don't really need to be doing anything, but there's always something to do. And I really like that about it. Drop the flower seeds? Hell no, I'm starting to farm later. I'm going to drop the seed. Do we 99 of 100 armor? I feel like armor magazines are dropping too much or something. I don't know what's going on, but... 100 armor. Bada boom. So now every time I get an armor magazine, like what what happened? Do I just get experience? Because now that I'm thinking about it, that might actually be great. It's just XP? Okay. Yeah, that's true. We could also sell it or or scrap it and stuff as well. Good call. Excuse me. You guys hear something? I no? Okay. Mm -hmm. Use the mini bike storage? I probably should. I feel like a smart person would. Uh, Rhinus Div. Oh! Thought you might want to see this video of Black Myth Wukong behind the scenes with some devs. They are so cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out later, man. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited for Black Myth, Black Myth Wukong. I have I have very high hopes for that game. Every trailer we've seen makes it look pretty freaking badass. And if it is even half as badass as those trailers look, it'll be a pretty decent game. So if they nail it, if it if it actually if it actually plays as well as it looks, <laughs> then we're talking like, oh shit! Like is this a new franchise? Like because I mean it looks great, mm. but we'll see. How a game looks and how a game plays, unfortunately, as we've all learned many times, are two very different things. So we'll have to see.